the next talk, just keep the physics in mind. Um, these are basic knowledge. You, you have to have the knowledge to compare devices and companies and you can go for the websites as well. If you go for the ISMST website, ismst.com, or for the DGEST website, this is the German society, which has in English written as well, the DGEST, D-I-G-E-S-T, dot minus E-V dot com. And you can find all these physical parameters from all the companies on this website as well. Um, now, really more difficult. Um, physics are pretty easy. Uh, but now the, the very difficult um, part occurs, but within the last two slides, I can summarize that, that you should take home that makes things much more easier to understand. Um, this is the history um, of how shockwaves were uh, spreaded right in the world. It started in Germany, and from the urologist, it comes to the um, orthopedist. And this is... Um, 86, 86, this is, um, this is German, this is Haupt, Gerald Haupt, he's a German urologist. He's very close to Christian Chaussy. So he took over the technique to another city. And this city, he has a machine where the urology department is pretty close to the um, orthopedic department. And Gerald Haupt is together with a very good orthopedic surgeon in the laboratories. And they have the same working place together. This is the reason why they ch start discussing it. And then the orthopedist that has seen the x-rays from the urologist and he found on the treated side, if they have the kidney stone with the kidney is pretty low and the shockwave has to pass the iliac crest, that the iliac crest on the treated side has a higher bone mass density by just by x-rays. That's the reason why the first orthopedic surgeon found that maybe shockwave has an effect on um, bone pathology. And then Valciano, he was the first one um, who uses the technique uh, communication with the orthopedist. Um, he did this for animal trials and treat bone pathologies at a very high energy level. And he found that he is able to, to produce a bone healing repair mechanism in delayed unions and a non union model. Karl Dahmen and Markus Löw, Markus Löw, you heard the name before. Um, published it in the English um, Journal of, of um, Bone and Joint Surgery, an excellent trial, firstly describing how shock waves can work in calcific lesion of the shoulders. So the waves from the kidney stones, the bone pathologies, to calcific tendinitis of the shoulder, and then they found patients with calcific tendinitis of the shoulder have less pain, even the calcific lesion is not disappeared. So then the next orthopedic surgeons did research on how could it be, and they found that shock wave has an analgesic effect. And then they transform it to other pathologies. That's the reason why we have it right now for all these musculoskeletal <coughs> disorders. Followed by all these FDA approval um, studies, and uh, some of them get the approval, some of them did not. Um, indication for extracorporeal shock wave therapy in general, um, tendon, muscle, bone, skin, nerve, all these, these indications right now were covered by extracorporeal shock therapy. And I have two talks later on with so-called standard indications and I give a talk on so experimental new indications that you have an overlook about what's possibly um, applicable in, in the recent time you have. Shock with devices, um, you know it right now, focused, radial, defocused, planar, keep these four things in mind that you have this technology and 90% covered with the radio technology and 10% is not covered, then you can use, look for focus devices. Level of evidence, we have this evidence right now and you can get these level and all the literature later on by me. This is a cons consensus statement, this is from the ISMST, this is the International Society um, with, with an annual meeting where then where the, have a managing board, they discuss all these new indications and techniques and we try to, to, to um, give recommendations and publish it on, the, on our website. And you, you, it's password free, you, can, you have an easy approach to make it and you can download most of these things which we can show here on the internet easily. The ISMST is talking about so-called standard indications or approved indication and common a common empirically tested clinical use or 
expert indications or exceptional indications. And a lot of these indications um, cover most of the orthopedic disorders right now. Um, you have to keep in mind, if you apply extracorporal chakra therapy, the treatment itself is not that difficult. It's, it's pretty easy to apply. The, the, the most important thing is to find the right diagnosis, to, to look for the right patient. Not every patient who has heel pain has just a tendinopathy. Um, this is the case, um, this is MRI. For a patient who has a plantar heel, heel pain, this is the cal 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 calcaneum, this is the plantar fascia, and this MRI is showing that it's partial rupture of the, like a tendinopathy, and you can see the rupture of the plantar fascia. A complete rupture of the plantar fascia is a very rare cases. Um, I've seen two of these within the FDA trial, uh, two out of um, 300. So mostly they have normal um, tendon order. Contraindications for all these um, applications. Um, these are these are standard contraindication with, which you can find on the website as well. It has to be modified and we are working on it because some of these contraindications are still not any more contraindications. Some of them change to be indications. But this is this, for example, this is a case where a patient, this is a patient with the with the plantar heat spur right here. Came to my office, this is one of my cases, and um, patient got shock wave treatment, clinical clinical uh, findings pretty pretty easy. Uh, typical pressure pain on the pain on the medial tubercle of the tuba of the calcaneum, and patient got a full cycle of treatment, three treatment with two weeks apart, uh, with the ready technique, and and three months later, patient comes in my office, is still saying the pain is is not better. I still have significant pain. I still have something like swelling on the on the heel pain, and then you make an X-ray. Can you see the difference between this one and this one? Do you see anyone see any differences? No difference? You should become closer. <laughs> you, need, you, need, you need glasses. Um, it's not that easy. One of my fellows, he has not seen it, for sure, because he has to look from this picture and this picture. If you see the heat spur, is, has anyone has seen an increase of calcifications after treatment of the experienced users? No. I'm pretty sure 